Last night at King Street Patriots, we had a, a meeting where we were discussing outreach to minority communities, and met Kira Davis there. And Kira, thank you for joining us early this morning for Texas GOP vote. And uh, I was really impressed with what you had to say last night about a lot of different issues. But tell us where we are with minority outreach. You have a, a conservative radio talk show in uh, Los Angeles area mm -hmm. and streamed nationwide. I was I was actually surprised you had people coming up to you that know you very well here in Houston, and this is your first trip to Houston. Yeah, it was a wonderful trip, and I do. I, I broadcast twice a week, and uh, one of my passions is for uh, outreach to the African American community and um, how conservatism can be used to bring success back to the black community. It's been lost, and I believe one of the reasons is this entitlement uh, mentality that we've been um, told is, is going to be good for us, but it's really just kind of decimated the black community. So that's really one of my passions, is, is, is using the constitutional principles to elevate the black community. You know, earlier this year, the, Republic, or the Democrats and the liberal media created this mythological Republican war on women. <laughs> and after listening to you last night and some of the things that I've been observing over through the course of the last several years, it would almost be fair to say that there's a Democrat war on minorities in this country with, with the policies of, of um, holding people back through, through making them dependent on the government. Do you see that in your community? I do, and I think the ironic thing is that it's, it's billed as help, but this is what, one thing I always say is I, I really think that the, the worst kind of racism is the kind that cloaks itself in the mantle of social justice. So it tells you we, we're here to help you, but the help is hurt. And that's really what we're experiencing right now. Uh, I understand that it, it seems on the surface like uh, it's good intentions, you know, helping people to get on their feet. But what it actually does, it, it makes us dependent. We've lost the uh, black father. 73% of our children are born into unmarried households. And marriage is the number one indicator for success it, as an adult. So obviously we've seen that these policies have failed. And I know a lot of black conservatives like myself get accused of being sellouts and because we're Republican and there's something strange about that to a lot of people. But honestly, it's not about party. It's really about uh, using a different way to get the results that we had always hoped we would get under this system that the Democrats have been pushing for us for so many years. Now, you're not an American by birth. You're an American by choice. Uh, you were born in Canada yes. and became a naturalized U.S. citizen. Um, tell us your perspective as an immigrant who's become a citizen about America and, and the freedoms that we have in this country. I think one thing that Americans who are born and raised here don't understand is, is uh, Americans view freedom very differently than the rest of the world. The rest especially in Canada, which is it's not that much different from America, but even there, we view freedom a bit differently. This idea of freedom of speech is not the same around the rest of the world, but it's the freedom of speech in America that actually makes America free. And there's, it's just it's something, a, a very special brand of freedom, and that's what makes this country so powerful and a place where people literally die to get to. And um, I think that that's one of the things that angers me the most when I see just the gross malpractice of the mainstream media is that they're muzzling themselves. They're putting a muzzle on freedom of speech. They're not reporting the truth. They don't report the details. They, they skew their stories. There's such a bias that um, they're actually voluntarily giving up freedom of speech and that is the most important freedom that Americans have. It's what makes America very special. And so um, I just, it's a privilege to be here. I wish more Americans felt that way too. This really is a privilege, it's not a perfect country, but it's the best. Now, freedom of speech, obviously you have your radio show and we have Texas GOP vote. We're both very active in, in exercising that right. Um, you get a lot of criticism from the left on the media 
and a lot of times you'll take and actually turn their tools back against them. <laughs> How does that work? Well, it's funny because I was having an argument with a, uh, a, a black liberal commentator one, one day, and I was uh, uh, talking about the, the racism that black conservatives experience and just the horrible names that we get called. And, and he was accusing me of being a victim, and he was saying, well, you're doing what you accuse us of doing. You're being the victim. And I said, you know what, look, I'm just playing by your rules. And if you don't like this game, then amend your playbook or get out of the game. But I think they're always going to use this issue of race. It's always going to be on the table. Because for the left, that's all they really have. They don't have the truth or the facts on their side. So they have to go with emotion. And I'm, it's one of my favorite things about the late Andrew Breitbart. His thing was, play by their rules and make them abide by their rules. So I don't want to play this game, but if you want to play this game, then let's play it. So everything you say to me, you know, I can bring it back to race too. I can do what you do too. It's not very fun, is it? It's not very intelligent, is it? But that's the rules you set up. So why don't we just play by them? Yeah, it, they really don't like it when you turn the tables on them and use, use their tools against them. Uh, we talked a little bit about racism last night in your discussion and uh, and about abortion and uh, Planned Parenthood. Tell us your thoughts about, I know that's a very sensitive issue and one of the things you mentioned last night is something that's just not talked about in the black community, something I didn't realize. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize it's, uh, it's very uh, prevalent in the black community. I'll tell you, when I was living in the inner city, there were two Planned Parenthoods within blocks of my house. I now live in the suburbs, and I can't tell you where the Planned Parenthood is in the suburbs. You know, that means something. You know, there there's something to that. And of course, you and I know the racist foundations of Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger, but a lot of people don't know that. And in in the Black community, it is something that's not really talked about. Uh, and I can't for sure say why. One thing is is we do have conservative values, and so while we do make up a disproportionate amount of abortions, it's just not something that we're proud of or want to speak about. And in a way it makes it difficult to, to be honest about the, tr the real tragedy of the situation. And it's a challenge that we face, you know, educating people about exactly where this issue came from, why it's so prevalent in the black community, and how we're literally killing off our future political capital. It really is amazing. Uh, I've, I've seen some black pastors talk about that literally an entire generation of black voters has been murdered. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things you'll always hear uh, Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson talk about, about how we need to have more say in the process. We need to be more involved in the process. We need more black leaders. Well, we're killing those people. You know, we, we, could, we could have uh, 50 million extra black people in this country, and that would make go a long way to uh, having more influence in the political process in this country. And instead, we are shrinking. We're the only minority population in the United States that is actually shrinking, and yet we are pro we are the most American minority. We've, we've been here the longest. You know, we literally built this country on our backs. You know, and now instead of being able to enjoy, now that we're free, we really are free, instead of being able to enjoy, enjoy the fruits of the, that labor, we're annihilating ourselves and, and aborting ourselves completely out of the political landscape. How can people find your radio show? You can find me on my website at kiradavis.net. I'm on twice a week, Sunday nights and Tuesday nights, and, and you can also search my name, Kira Davis, on Blog Talk Radio. That's where you can find my show. And uh, Twitter, I'm really active on Twitter. A lot of conservatives are, and you can follow me at Kira Davis 422. And I understand from last night that you're going to become a blogger for Texas GOP Vote. And yes. And we'll be publishing your work as well. A privilege, yes. And, and we look forward to helping you spread uh, your message out to conservatives across the country. One of the things that you, you did talk about was how conservative the family values are. And one of, the, one of the things that I noticed how that was expressed, when California tried to pass gay marriage, the, uh, it was the black community that stood up and stopped that. Yeah. And, and showed that they, in fact, do vote conservative. 
when they're voting their values and not just what their party is telling them to vote. So, look forward to having you with Texas GOP Vote. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. And uh, we want to encourage everyone to get out and vote these next few days yes. until the election gets here. Vote. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you very much.